Hey, this is Chris from Pixelwix, and I'm just showing you some new updates that we have in AutoBlend. They'll allow us to actually calibrate a screen without cameras and any sensors or anything like that. And it does a quick job. And there's nothing against uh, cameras, but you know, sometimes there's just a cockpit in the way, or there's an object in the way, and if the camera can't see the screen, it can't calibrate. So this is we've come up with a quick method to really um, do the job in very little time and to give us all the benefits that we get from a camera but without one of course. Uh, what I've got here is a 220 degree screen so that's bad enough as itself and you can see I've got light streaming in from the back which would really upset the camera anyway. So I can go over here and I can see it's 220 degrees and we have some top cover with the projectors and they're HD projectors. I think I can probably mount, pull this up here and show you where they are. There they are, they're all at the top there, they're them BenQ uh, 1080 things and we'll go down and there's the Zeta. So I'm going to first uh, blank the screen. Now what we've done in AutoBlend is we've told the two servers, because there's one server which is all the rendering thing with all the fancy graphic cards and stuff like that, and we're just using a small uh, desktop computer to control the uh, render, uh, sorry, the control side. So you need a two uh, computer type configuration, you put AutoBlend on both. So they're both connected by our IP. And uh, let's just go to the software and we'll send um, a signal to say display view one. So first of all I'll blank the uh, screens and we'll send a signal to view one. And on view one that's coming out for projector three because they're inverted. Um, we've got um, a checkerboard pattern with column numbers in it. And what we've done is we've gone around this whole screen and we divide it. I don't think you can really see there at the top but I'll go to the side you'll be able to see where the light is from the sun. So you can see that here there is some little circles um, put on the side of the screen. We div divided that um, rows up to six. We don't need much problems going on, so we just put six. But in the actual uh, circumference of the whole 220, we've put actually 20. So we divided the screen in half and then divided again, divided, and we've got to, you know, 20. Um, but the projector number three on the first side here, basically, we've told it how much the projector covers. So in the software we told it the projector's beam only covers nine columns. And that's why you see a nine in the side there. So that's why this nine is here. So all I have to do now is make sure that all my columns which are between these numbers match to my little dots that are put up on the screen. And to do that, that's on the controlling server. So on the controlling server I go up to my view and I select that I want to do just horizontals and I can grab a point and move all of the horizontals and you can see the bottom doesn't really move. Now I align this with my little dots and I've obviously done some of this beforehand so I don't have to do too much but basically I'm just stretching things out to make sure they're all straight which I just did there and we move on to number two. So now I just go to uh, black that one out because I don't want to see that at the moment and go to number two and move the camera here and we see number two. And now I've done basically gone down to number three and so on. So I've done three like this. Now I need to send the signal from the controller to say show me all projectors. And I've done so. So you can see I've basically gone through here and just straightened them up. It was a very easy process. Um, I can see that nine is not correct because we've been moving it around. There's a double line there um, just here. And so I need to get rid of that. So I'll go back to uh, my edit mode, select my view, which is view one. Tell it again, I'm not doing anything more than just uh, moving the horizontal. I can go into sub column type def definitions and really, really move everything if I want to, but why do you need to if you don't need to, right? So uh, now I'm gonna move that uh, over a bit and make sure these fellas are uh, now looking nice, which isn't too tricky. And that looks about right. Of course, I'm sure you guys can see better than I because I'm looking uh, very tough over my monitor here. Okay, that looks better. And so we've done that. Now, we can see that uh, between uh, 7 and 9 and 12 and 14, there's a double brightness issue because that's where the projectors are actually overlapping. They normally have to go through the process of blending this all out. Well, we don't have to do that here. All I have to do now is to tell this to calibrate. And he says, it says, please wait, being very polite. And it's calibrating with a great algorithm to produce one. 
amazing seamless view look at that no blending I didn't do any of that I didn't do any of all the little points in between all I told it was the columns and rows there it's done now that's pretty good but most games and stuff and uh, the new ones anyway like flight simulation and stuff and things like that they have the benefit of having multiple virtual cameras inserted into the game now normally you play a game with this wider view which is 220 degrees really what happens is the first you know 100 odd degrees look great and then the rest of it's all stretched and you know cars come past you and they get really big and then they get really small irritating right so some people get over this by just throwing computers at it and each computer does a portion of the view but here we can actually tell it to calculate and I'll just go over to the calculate button and I'm telling it to calculate multiple views and it just did that that's giving me some degree marks on the screen which we can see and I'm going to now view that as a 3D tunnel and it's done a nice perfect job of producing non-stretched perfect view now really what happens in the program now is we export this and it exports all the files for you know explain and fsx and prepare 3d and, and any other programs that can use that kind of information so i'll now go and uh, just come out of the program on the master machine and we import that now because pixel Warp can import all these mesh files from um, these camera calibration and, and mouse calibration systems so uh, we'll go over to pixel Warp and you can see the image in front of us is how it's not working it's not actually switched on at the moment and you can see I've still got the overlaps and it's still quirky because his mouth is off the his chin and mouth are actually off the bottom of the screen there which is not right so now we'll switch on pixel warp we'll use an evo here and uh, I'll import the uh, pattern which I think I've got it set to do automatically so it's going to grab that um, pattern we just exported and it's going through the process incidentally other things on pixel warp here is this is working in uh, directly onto Nvidia's uh, graphics board it's not capturing the um, DirectX and OpenGL in the normal way these programs do it's actually directly injecting it into the world look at that don't do nothing let me just see if I can uh, improve the uh, brightness on the camera there we go and you can see it's imported beautifully so I haven't done any blending I haven't done all the bits in the between what I've done is just say load the camera file or load the auto blend file actually in. and we can go in there and do some sub editing and I can switch it on and off here and you can see the Nvidia button there is telling it that it's using the uh, quadro warping because we've got a quadro card in here because this, this is a flight simulation product at the moment and you can see that it's all perfect now if I wanted to do the flight simulation now I could actually go in here and say um, load in let's pull into display and load in the multi view version which is for the because uh, it, it chucks out two it chucks out the uh, single view single virtual view or multi view so I'm going to tell it external calibration and pick the multi one and go and I'll just recycle so it reloads the multi now this is going to be three based on the angle of these projectors it's going to generate a view which it has now you see it looks quite different but it's kind of like three overlapped flats if you like and uh, let's try it with uh, prepared 3d or prepare 3d how you want to pronounce this and you'll see it go through its process of doing all the scenery this is the default setting so I'm not going to put anything fancy on here but all you flight enthusiasts you'll know what this is doing and we should have a perfect there we go look at that so now all of the stuff around the sides of me is not stretched and neither is it over here so we just have a perfect view um, I don't really know how to use this program very much but I do believe I have to put the uh, mouse yoke on here we go and press brakes and so on and here we go so we can give you a little flight here of perfect uh, graphics and up I go I'll go up a little bit and pan around and see what we can see this is not particularly a 
you know, brilliant um, place of, to, for the views, but you can see that the, there's no real woohoo, Chris, <laughs> well I've crashed it, but you can see that when I did that there was no um, stretching graphics and so on, and I've created some sparks, well that's probably my normal type of driving actually. So anyway, this is Chris from Pixelwix, and uh, that's um, Auto Blend with uh, Pixelwall.